What up guys, it's Matt, and today I just wanted to shoot a video uh, on ABG techniques. So this is not interpretation of blood gas results, but specifically um, more of a subjective video about how I perform my ABG sticks. And I just want to share with you guys a couple little you know, tricks and tips that I do that help me be very successful with them. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright guys, so this is the little prepackaged kit that we use at uh, my work. Uh, these are actually designed to go with some new ABG machines we're trying to get up and running, but they also work uh, with our existing kits. So we'll go ahead and open it here. So inside we have kind of your common stuff, and if you've ever used prepackaged ABG kits, uh, this is all pretty pretty standard stuff um, you know when you have to make your own it's more like you're just grabbing the needle and then you make sure you get your alcohol and whatnot but um, so of course we have our syringe uh, there's a little heparin wafer inside there's also a little ball you'll see in there and that's just something proprietary to this kit again for uh, that uh, special blood gas machine that we have basically we have a little thing we can stick these on and it'll kind of spin that ball up so instead of you having to shake the needle uh, to mix up your sample really well that just does it real quick for you so it's kind of convenient and what's really nice about this kit too is this thing here so um, in some kits where you kind of have to you know you get your sample and then you're sitting there trying to aspirate all the bubbles out real carefully up top uh, this one you don't have to do that this little cap is actually like a filtered and allows you to aspirate directly uh, to the atmosphere without squirting blood everywhere. Um, so super convenient to use that. Of course a little 2x2 two two for holding pressure. Alcohol wipe. Uh, these do come with the iodine patch. Uh, I've never used it so I usually throw it away. Uh, and then you're gonna get mixed opinions about band-aids. I've seen experienced therapists say these are garbage, throw the band-aid away, always just hold pressure till it stops bleeding, which I don't think is the worst advice, you know, ever, but at the same time, uh, if I can't afford to stand around for 20 minutes to hold pressure, sometimes what I'll do is I'll keep my 2x2 two two, uh, folded up, you know, kind of in quarters or whatever, and then do a nice, nice tight tape down on it with the band-aid too just to hold pressure as needed. And then finally, a biohazard bag. So, and we don't have the eye stats or anything at my current hospital, uh, so we don't run the blood sample right then and there. So this is just nice to throw your sample down um, in here. That way you're not walking around your hospital with a uh, syringe full of blood. So that's everything that's in our kits. All right guys, so when it comes to preparing this, you know, how you get into your flow or whatever is is totally subjective and personal preference. Um, you know me, once I have all of my stuff sitting out here, what I usually do is begin opening everything. Obviously I'm not wearing gloves guys, um, I'm at home, I don't have access to gloves. I didn't bring any home for this video, so uh, first thing I would obviously do is put on gloves. But I usually like to pop open my band-aid. Now I've seen some people like to like pull one side off and like stick it to a bed rail or something uh, you know in this day and age especially with coronavirus uh, I've never liked to do that practice anyway and I look at anything and everything that something can touch as a potential to be like a fomite and carry some sort of bacteria virus whatever so these I would usually stick back to that clean gloved hand and that way there it is ready to go I can peel it right off my glove and slap it on you know it won't stick to me completely because I've left one side on and the back of my glove is typically clean, so I'm not as concerned about this area here uh, touching the back of my glove. Next, I will usually go ahead and tear open my alcohol wipe, just have it pulled out or just sitting on top, something like that. My 2x2, two two, again, just like the alcohol, usually pull it out, have it prepped up like that, bags off to the side. The last thing I typically open is my syringe because before I've opened this as I've kind of got my stuff ready I've I've usually already 
uh, palpated for the pulse, palpated again, palpated both sides if necessary, trying to decide, hey, which one do you think is going to be better, left or right? You know, and especially on your awake patients, especially the ones who are afraid of needles, you don't want to be walking around with this needle out of its package. I don't know, it's just, it's just a little less intimidating when this thing's still in its package. You're not sitting there like, okay, let's decide. Um, of course, whatever side uh, you decide on, perform your Allen's test, of course. Me, I don't have a preference for left or right. You know, I, I will use whatever side has the better feeling pulse. One of the things they they talk about a lot in school, too, is uh, making sure that you get the patient into a comfortable position for you in order to stick. And if that means raising the bed up, you know, lowering the bed down, pulling over a bedside table or, or some sort of a procedure tray or something to, to get an arm, taping arms down. Absolutely, guys, uh, especially when you're learning. That, that is incredibly important to, to learn how to do that uh, to make sure you get real comfortable. Now, one of the biggest things I like to teach, and one of the reasons I'm really doing this video is because I've noticed so a lot, most people are right-handed, and so they prefer to stick with their right hand. Uh, and I guess I don't blame them. I'm right-handed. Uh, but I can stick with either hand. And that was one of the things that was taught to me, not in school, but actually uh, as a new grad. Take the challenging ones. When you're going and you're on nights and, and your night shift are pulling those AM, ABGs or whatever, uh, absolutely Try the most difficult patients. Try those patients who are on a ton of pressers or something and they're going to be tough sticks. I would challenge every student out there to learn how to stick with your left hand as well. Um, and the reason being because uh, let's say uh, you have a patient who has like a fistula in their right arm for dialysis and so you can't, you can't use that right arm. Uh, they're, or they're a limb alert for any number of reasons on, on, on the right. So you're like, well now I got to use the left. Now, I've seen some students who will take the left, right? And you will pull the left all the way out only to try to come and, and still stick with your right hand up that way. And nothing wrong with that, actually. Um, if the patient is able to do that, then absolutely, if you're comfortable doing that, then do that. Um, however, you're not always going to have the ability to do that with every patient. Fair warning. You can have a patient with uh, any number of diseases that just cause any sort of like posturing or tightness and you get a patient who's real tight and maybe their body's pulled in real close and you don't have the option to take that right arm oh, and lay it flat and stretch it all the way out and get it nice and relaxed and pull it way out so you can comfortably get it on a table and come in from that, that right. You may have no other option but to stick with your left hand. And I promise you, it is a skill that will pay dividends in the long run of your career. So with that being said, we checked our Allen's test right. Our Allen's test is, is great. They got good um, you know, backup perfusion, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, so again, this needle's capped, right? You would never pull that off, in my opinion, until you're absolutely 100% ready to stick them. Make sure you pull back. So usually, we do one cc, okay? You could pull back a little more. Um, that's totally up to you. Sometimes you can only get that much or whatever, that's fine. Pull back as much as you're comfortable trying to get. Now again, guys, for the, the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm not even gonna take that off. I'm gonna go ahead and put the safety on this particular one up and lock it uh, because I don't wanna get stuck with the needle. So, so theoretically here now, our thing is ready. We're ready to go in and stick. We've prepared the area, right? We're gonna stick them. We've prepared that area. I've seen some people, you know, they'll do their fingertips with alcohol too. That's just so they're not really connected. That's perfectly fine. Do whatever you like to do. And then I always go back in and I palpate again, right? Make sure I got a real good landmark for where that pulse is. Now initially I will come in and I will do two fingers to see if I can feel. 
but ultimately I like to only use one finger for my final palpation uh, just because I have a real strong pulse in my middle finger and a lot of people do have strong pulses in their middle finger and so sometimes it's easy to feel your own pulse so I always like a one finger palpation because yeah, what I like to do is too I'll have my needle maybe coming up real close as I'm and I'm still palpating and then I kinda like to figure out where exactly if I can if I can get that pulse really well on my fingertip that's where I'm most comfortable because that's the least amount of surface area if I'm palpating and it feels like it could be anywhere on my entire you know top section of my finger here that's not a really like, could it be here 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 you know it's a lot of potential for redirection if I can get it real well on my fingertip that's where I'm real comfortable okay I hundred percent and then as I come in with my needle I kinda roll my finger as I insert the needle and uh, I have a lot of success with that so again I'm right-handed this is my left hand I would come in and I do more of a like a throwing dart action it's just really it's a wrist movement a little bit of finger movement and that's just this is how I do it everyone can do it a little bit differently for me it's real subtle real slow controlled movement there okay make sure your bevels up always on your needle it's really hard to see especially since I got a cap and a safety on there but bevel should always be up and do not uh, when you've stuck a patient and you've gone all the way in okay let's say shoot I'm I'm missing it I'm I'm not getting this remember to always pull out till you see the very edge of the top of that bevel before you redirect okay uh, this thing is really sharp and digging around in there remember you're not real superficial like on an IV here so digging around that's very painful can cause a lot of uh, tissue damage if you're not careful the other thing to remember is uh, it doesn't take a huge movement unless you're way off unless you realize like oh crap like that artery is way over there uh, your redirections actually very small movements out here make up big differences in the direction you're sticking so you don't need to make really big significant changes when you're redirecting unless you're just absolutely way off and then if you're really that far off you should really just consider withdrawing the needle starting with a fresh kit and trying again okay um, so you get in right they always teach you 45 degrees that's a great angle for it pull out you can withdraw go back in okay I limit myself to two withdrawals and redirections so I stick let's say I miss I don't get anything okay I withdraw back to my bevel I redirect I go back in again so I don't still don't get anything shoot you know pull back out I'll uh, redirect one more time insert if I don't get anything the third try I'm pulling the needle out holding pressure giving the patient a break because chances are if you didn't hit an artery at all you got no flashes or maybe you got a little venous flash and nothing else they shouldn't be bleeding a whole lot anyway um, then at that point you would open a new kit get a new alcohol wipe get a new 2x2 two two, all the good stuff get it all set back up and go again or consider the other side um, I try a total of twice if I don't get it in two sticks I'm usually calling someone else uh, you can go brachially uh, I'm just not good at brachial sticks. I really like radial sticks. Um, but that's my technique. And again, I recommend that all students get comfortable using your left hand as well. Not just relying on be, being able to, uh, to move that arm into any position in order to, to stick, okay? Um, and I say that again just because you will run into situations where you do not have the option to get that patient in a position where you can still use your right arm to stick okay um, so so just get comfortable sticking with your with your left hand as well I more recently began doing art lines um, being able to do it left or right handed uh, for me has paid dividends I, I've so far successfully gotten four art lines placed on five attempts and uh, 
three of the four that I've gotten, I've gotten on the left-handed. So it's paid dividends for me to get real comfortable because again with art lines where you're being extra sterile, you have sterile towels, you might have a sterile drape, you've you know chlorhexidine prepped and stuff. It's it's a pain sometimes with these patients to get them positioned in a, in a really comfortable way and still maintaining a really solid sterile field. Um, so I can work a lot easier and a lot faster because I've trained myself to be able to go with my left hand. So I recommend that. So guys, you got your stick, you got your sample, cool. You're gonna hold pressure. Um, after about 30 seconds, I usually check to see what we're looking like. And from there, uh, you can either leave them alone if they're not bleeding. You could throw the Band-Aid on for good measure if you want. Um, again, I sometimes will fold it over and then take that Band-Aid off and stick it on like that or like that or whatever. And that way it holds a little pressure. Now, obviously, if you've gotten a patient who um, getting a little hematoma or something, that's where it's appropriate to maybe take your your two by two, all right, and you kind of put it into held it in place, get a little coband, do a little little coband to hold a little pressure on it too. I've um, seen it happen a few times in ICU or ED. It's a matter of letting the nurse know, do hey, they got a little hematoma going on or whatever, so they can keep an eye on it as well. And guys, that's it for my uh, ABG technique. All right, guys, so there it is. Um, I hope my little tips and tricks maybe help you or maybe maybe help push you a little out of your comfort zone, you know, to try something new, try with the left hand. Again, this video was totally subjective. Uh, this is not a right or wrong way. Uh, you know, there is a right and wrong way to do ABGs, um, but I think some of the techniques and tips and tricks, uh, like again, have helped me a lot in, in my time as a respiratory therapist. So hopefully they'll help you out. Hopefully uh, students some some little tips that will uh, give you some success in clinic. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you guys soon.